Are you glad to be here today? Yes. I believe you. <laughs> um, how many of you have been here over the last few Sundays, whether you were here all the time or occasionally? Wonderful. So as you know, uh, Reverend Jennifer has been um, sharing with you or starting the year with kind of review of the basic principles of unity. Today we're going to cover the fifth and final one, but before we do that, it's only fit and just that I give you a pop quiz to see if you've been keeping up <laughs> so far. Now, I know I just said the two words and some of your stomachs probably got nodded because you have some unresolved testing issues from when you were a child, but that's okay. It's all right. This will be an easy quiz, I guarantee success. So, the four principles that we've covered so far. What's principle number one? Don't all jump, jump at once. Come on, just, what, what is it? There's one power, there's one presence there in unity. That's, that's what we refer to as God, that pervading essence in the universe. That's the long version. What's the short version? Do you remember? God is. God is. You gotta remember that. God is. What's the second? I am. B- is what? I am. Whoa, I'm hearing, I'm hearing music. Whoa. <laughs> Did you hear that too, or is that just in my head? <laughs> okay. Making sure I'm not the only one going crazy here. All right. So, so the second one is I am. That's a short version which basically says that that very one power and that one presence, that that is our innate essence. That is who we are at our core. Uh, unity, longtime unity minister and author Eric Butterworth says it, the, the very allness that is God, the very fullness of God is all the way present at the point of who I am and who you are. That's the I am. What's the third one? Created. I create it. In other words, through the, through the power of our thoughts and our beliefs and our very actions, we create the experience of the world that we want to have. And sometimes I also put it, when the world does what it does, we create how we experience it. I create it. What's the fourth one? Prayer. I pray through prayer and through the practice of meditation. This is how we get grounded in our consciousness with what the divine wants to express through us. And today's the fifth principle, probably the most important of all, because the fifth principle says, while these other principles are great, how it really happens is we live it, we practice it. It's good to know these things. We can study spiritual teachings, we can read all the books, but if we're not actually living it and putting it into practice, then, you know, what what good is it? It's not enough to know them, we have to live them. So we have... God is, I am, I create it, I pray, I live it. Okay, those are the five basic principles. Easy to remember. Reverend Jennifer taught you a chant last year. We're going to revisit it today. The five principles chant. So if you ever forget what the five principles of unity are, it's simple. God is, I am, I create it, I pray, I live it. God is, I am, I create it. I pray, I live it. We got a band. Jeff, give me a beat. All right, baby, you know we got that. There we go. Let's try it again. God is, I am, I created. I pray, I live it. God is, I am, I created. John, give me some guitar. God is, I am, I created. I put hands together now. God is, I am, I created. Bass, Casey. God is. Yeah, now we got a party going on. God is, I am, I Jim, hit me with some keys. God is, I created, I pray, I live. God is, I am, I created, I pray, I live. God is, I am, I created. One more time. I am taking these guys wherever I go. I'm like, you know, your own personal soundtrack. You just hit it, and there they go. What party? What party? Thank you. I gotta take you to Naji. Thank you very much. So those are, the, those are the five principles, and that fifth one is really, really, like I said, the, the crux, the core. Because what happens is, when, when we live it, this is how the transformation happens. So we, we study these principles, we learn about them. And what happens is, as we learn about them, they change our beliefs. We, we, we get a new belief system. 
When we change our beliefs, then we change our thoughts. Because that's where our thoughts stem from. Both the conscious and the unconscious ones, they stem from our beliefs. And sometimes we have beliefs we don't even know we have. Those embedded things we learned or that were taught to us when we were like this high, that, that, that make up our worldview. You know, Einstein said it, we either believe this universe is a friendly place or we don't. And we learn it when we're this high. And sometimes then we have to relearn it or re-educate re ourselves. So our beliefs inform our thoughts. Our thoughts inform our actions. We live according to how we think. And we think according to how we believe. And our actions is what creates this world experience that we're having. So if we want to transform this world experience, we have to transform the way we live. If we want to transform the way we live, we have to transform the way we think. If we want to transform the way we think, we have to transform the way we believe. And if we want to transform the way we believe, we need a new set of beliefs. And this is what spiritual study is all about. This is why we gather here every Sunday as well. Yes, it is to connect with each other. Yes, it is to have a good time and hear some good music. But truly, you're here because you are being called to transform your life experience and the world. So that's what we are all about here in this community, providing the opportunities for transformation. That's why, this is why, just secret, shh, don't tell anyone, this is why we don't call them announcements. We call them opportunities for transformation. You know, we didn't just call it that because we did the research and nobody in church likes the word announcements, you know. <laughs> Sometimes we hear the word, it's not just me, when I, when, I, when I go to other churches, or I used to go to other churches, and I heard the word announcements, some the switch flicked in my brain, and I just like, checked out. <laughs> but that's not why we changed the word, because this is truly what they are, opportunities for transformation. Starting the day after service, the, the new member class, many of you have been coming here on Sunday mornings and been part of this spiritual community? Are you ready to take it to the next level? Are you ready to, to invest in this community and invest in yourselves? And it's not just another thing to add to your busy schedule. I know sometimes, I know, I see these opportunities and I go, oh, when am I ever gonna find the time? My life is overwhelming as it is already. But I want you to shift your thinking a little bit and realize that these opportunities are not meant to overwhelm you, but these opportunities are giving you a skill set to master the overwhelm. This is what these spiritual principles are about. You can be in the world, and you're not going to be overwhelmed because you've achieved levels of spiritual mastery. The other thing we have going on, the lessons in truth. Now, many of you have been in unity for a while. Some of you haven't. But whether you've been in a while or here, Lessons in Truth is one of those core, classic, unchangeable, always relevant books written by a, a Unity minister, Emily Cady. She was a contemporary of Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, the founders of Unity. And she lays it out as it is. She doesn't, she doesn't mince words. If you've ever read Charles Fillmore, the founder of Unity, if you've ever read anything he wrote, you sometimes walk away with a headache because his writing is so dense and intellectual. And like you read three pages and then you realize, I don't remember what I just read, I gotta go over it. I didn't, I didn't get it. But Emily Cady is not this way. She tells it like it is. She even says in her book, which is just classic humor irony, she actually says in her book, there comes a time in life when you have to put the books down and live these principles. You know, if you wanna sell a lot of books, you don't tell your readers, put the book down. You know, that's kind of contradictory, but she's clear. Again, we read, we study, we learn these principles. That is the first step, but that is not the only step. We have to live them. Then the other thing we have coming up is the Unfettered, Untethered Soul book study. If there's any book that's going to help transform your life experience, this is it. I don't say that about a lot of books. I don't even say that but the book I wrote, which is in the bookstore, by the way. <laughs> Shameless plug. 
but even if you don't join a book study and in your bulletin there is there is a list of all the groups that we have going on for this book study over the next few weeks there's a group here there's groups different times of days different locations but even if you don't join a book group and we highly advise you to pick up the book this book seriously will transform you and he's great let me read a little passage from the chapter called The Path of Unconditional Happiness. I don't know about y'all, but I could do with a dose of unconditional happiness. Still working on letting my happiness not be connected to what's happening outside of me. And that's not an easy journey. But here's what he says. The highest spiritual path is life itself. If you know how to live daily life, it all becomes a liberating experience. The highest spiritual path is life itself. You know, we think it's about meditation. We think, we think which is good. We think it's about studying these spiritual principles, and that's good. We think it's about finding the right guru. That's good. But the highest spiritual path, which is why we have that fifth principle, is life itself. Live in being. This is how you bring it into being. This is how you bring the one power, the one presence. This is how you bring the I am essence of who you are into being, by living it. Your life is a spiritual practice. How are you going to practice it? And you have to practice it, because if you don't practice it, then it will fade away. Quick story. So I'm a music, I used to be a music therapy music therapist. In college, I was a music therapy major. And when you, when you, I went to Shenandoah University, it was still a conservatory at the time in Winchester, and when you were a music major, you had to declare an instrument. Uh, this is the instrument you would study for all four years of your undergrad. So I was, a, I was a classical piano player at the time, so that was my instrument. But you also had to declare a minor instrument, because for some reason, studying one instrument for four years wasn't enough. You had to do two. Uh, but the second instrument was only half the time. So, you know, they cut you some slack there. So you had to declare a minor instrument. Well, I didn't play anything else. I certainly was not a singer. Um, and I could barely strum a few chords on a guitar. So I, I was kind of in a, in, a, in a pickle here. But as I went through their catalog, I realized, okay, you've got classical piano under one category, and over here you've got jazz piano as another category. Huh. So I walked in the register and I said, I would like to declare my minor instrument as jazz piano. He said, but you have piano as your major. I said, no, I have classical piano. He's like, they're the same instrument. I said, not according to you. <laughs> and he was, ah, you found the loophole. I said, yes. I'm good at that. I like taking shortcuts. But then, but then I go to my jazz piano lessons. And I thought it would have been simple. I'll play, I had played a little jazz piano before, so you know, I thought this would be a cakewalk. I had no idea the complexity involved in jazz music. There's more scales, there's more modes, there's more everything. And the piano instructor, the jazz piano instructor, when we sat down for our first lesson and he heard me play, he's like, all right, we got, we got some stuff we can build on here. Then he handed me some books like this thick and said, go practice some stuff. Well, I came back the subsequent weeks not having practice because, like I said, I like to take shortcuts. But you know what? There are no shortcuts to mastery. There are no shortcuts to mastery. You got to put the time in. You have to put the practice in. You have to live it. By the end of the semester, he was pulling what little hair he had out left because I wouldn't practice. He's like, you're not getting better. I don't understand. I said, because I'm not practicing. He's like, well, practice. I was like, I don't really want to. So it didn't end well for me in my jazz piano career. <laughs> practice, practice, practice. Live in the principles. This is how we bring the transformation about. Over the next 60 or so days, we are going to be also immersed in uh, what we are calling, not what we are calling, but what is called the season for nonviolence. You heard a little bit about it in the announcements of maybe last week. The season for nonviolence is a 64-day period. It runs from the January 30th, so it began earlier this week, to April 4th. And it's, it, it's a grassroots campaign that was started by Dr. Arun Gandhi. He's a 
grandson of Mahatma Gandhi. And it, it bookends the memorial dates we celebrate uh, Martin Luther King's birth and Gandhi's birth. And the idea of the season on, of nonviolence is to be in everyday practice of not just awareness, but actually doing something towards peace, towards nonviolence, towards ahimsa, that, that word that Gandhi used, that practice of doing no harm. Sixty days, sixty-four days, but from today, about sixty days of every day being in conscious and purposeful thought, belief, and practice of nonviolence. How many of you are on Facebook? Let me see all the Facebookers in the room. Wonderful. Twitter, anybody on Twitter? A lot less hands, but that's okay. Anybody even know what Google Plus is? Any, any Google Plusers? Yeah, we've got a few Google Plusers. Instagram. Who's on Instagram? There we go. Don't be, don't be shy. I'm on all of them. So is Unity of Gaithersburg. Unity of Gaithersburg is on all these social media outlets, and every day we are embarking on a social media campaign to invite you into nonviolence. Follow us on all these places. And every day you'll see the word for the day, like today's word was caring. And then there's an invitation into being in practice. Today's invitation for caring was, think of five ways that you can take care of yourself. And after you've thought of those five ways, actually do one of them today. How many times do we start our day saying, how can I take care of myself today? How many times do we actually do it? All care begins with self-care. All nonviolence begins with nonviolence towards yourself. So we can't be nonviolent towards someone else and out in the world if we don't start here. Yesterday's word was appreciation. And it came in real handy because my daughter and I, we went downtown to see the uh, Washington Auto Show. And on our way back, we were stuck in a metro station because the red line, bless his heart, the red line decided it was not only going to single track, but then at some point, kick us all off the train and say, we're using this train for something else, you got to wait for the next one, which came about 30 minutes later. I had some violent thoughts towards <laughs> the Washington Metro Authority. I'll admit it, that was my first response. I'm like, are you kidding me, really? But then I remembered the word of the day was appreciation. Truly, what could I appreciate about this experience? I appreciate the time with my daughter and the fact that because we were in the subway station, that particular station did not have a good cell phone signal, so heaven forbid we had to sit and talk to each yeah. other <laughs> and connect and relate about our day and what was the best part of our day. It was a daddy-daughter day because I said, you know, uh, Jennifer's out of town, so that's how we spent, we spent the day. And appreciation for the fact that, yes, while we are still waiting on this train, at least we have, at least we have public transportation that works well most of the time. And I could appreciate that. <coughs> so suddenly I was not having these nonviolent thought, these violent thoughts towards something else. Because when we have violent thoughts towards another, who are we harming? Ourselves. In your, in your bulletin is... This, this yellow sheet. On one side is all the different ways you can connect with us online. And these 64, uh, 64 ways to be nonviolent in 64 days are also posted on the Unity of Gaithersburg website, unityofgaithersburg.org, so please check those out. And on the other side is a pledge, a pledge I want all of us here to consider and to step into. The pledge to be nonviolent is, is a pledge to respect ourselves and others to communicate better, to listen, to forgive, to respect nature, to be courageous. Not only take this pledge together as a congregation, but for yourselves as well. Are we going to give you a practice? I gave you an invitation, now here's the practice. The practice is at the end of service, visit that table right over there against that far wall. And you will see different cards that reflect one of these commitments. Just take one, you could, you could or, or as many as you would like to, read it, make sure this is what you want to sign on for for this week. So for example, this week you would say, you know what, 
this week, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a conscious listener. I'm going to listen with an open heart. I'm going to listen and not get to the end of the conversation before the other person stops talking. I'm not going to listen and think about how am I going to formulate a response to get my point across. I'm just going to listen with an open heart. I'm going to listen nonviolently. I'm going to listen to be a presence. So if you want to do it, sign a card and put it in the basket in the middle of the table. We're going to put them up on our bulletin board uh, a little bit later so that as you walk in, you can see that we're all in this commitment together. Every day, go to one of our social media sites or the website and see what the word is, what the invitation is for that day. They'll be posted early in the morning so that you can go through your day consciously thinking about how am I going to be nonviolent today? How am I going to bring peace to the world, but first by bringing peace to myself. It's not going to happen out there until it happens in here. Again, we start here with our learning, with our beliefs, with our thoughts, with our actions, and then comes transformation. So who's with me? That'll do. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for stepping into this. They say it takes 21 days to change a habit. We're going for 64. Well, 60. 60 days of being conscious about bringing peace to this world. practice. That's how transformation happens. Namaste.